Alright, hey everybody, Jeff here. Just wanted to give a quick rundown on what's come in this week. Um, starting with a couple of things that came in today. I'm kind of excited about these. I mean, they're just more novelty than uh, anything that I really needed to have. But anyway, um, yeah, let's get to it. So these just, I, I assume, came out not too long ago. I went ahead and ordered as soon as I was aware of them. But these new Striper Picture Disc Singles... Um, there is one that came out before, earlier a couple months back and I did order that. But anyway, this one, these just came out, I guess, were just advertised. It looks like they released one from each of the last three major albums. Um, and this is a track Fallen with Yahweh. So this is from the Fallen album. And these are neat. They're, they're shaped, if you haven't seen them, they're shaped picture discs. So it's got the cover art and then you know it's got the songs on the back there and it's really nice they're pretty sturdy um and then the artwork inside is kind of like the album but they have uh marked it up there they're limited to 400 this is on the uh, church of vinyl label um wow 2015 is that when these songs were probably copyrighted i don't know i thought these just came out but i just noticed them number i got number 240 of 400 only 400 of them made and then the other one was the uh, no more hell to pay uh, get this off the glare it's got the album cover there and then legacy on the back and again same thing and they all look pretty neat you know and then, like I said there's a third one for the new album and I should have that in so what I did is I bought these two from the band site as soon as I got a message the other day that they were available. I was kind of on the fence about it because, I mean, for a single and picture disc, I'm not a big collector of picture discs, and they're not super cheap. And I thought, um, do I really want them? But then I thought, you know, I'm going to regret it if I don't get them and they go out of print. And just decide to take a chance if i totally hate having them it's not like i can't sell them i didn't buy them to sell but hey if they have to go if one day i get buyer's remorse fine anyway so those just came in today I haven't even had a chance to listen to them not that i don't know the songs but anyway neat little novelty thing and then the third one should be in um maybe tomorrow all right next up is another batch of limited run vinyl two more that came in I showed the last two uh, in my last video, and then these two came in a couple days ago. This is Circle of Silence, and these are on the No Life to Metal label. Um, so Scott Waters, in his label, has released these. Now, this is a, um, there's two of them, Suicide Candy Man. So there's two of them that came out, and get the glare off of there. Um, 94 and 95 releases. I had never heard of these. Was not aware of them at all. I guess Scott was, obviously. Um, David, what is it, his name? David Reese. I want to say his name wrong. Anyway, um, Bangladore Choir, whatever that band is. And he did some, uh, he's a guy that sang for Accept, too, right, on that one album. Um, he's on vocals. And then Larry Farkas on guitars. Now, if you're not familiar with Larry Farkas, he is, he's from a couple, um, Christian bands, Vengeance or Vengeance Rising, which uh, have seen recent reissues on vinyl. Um, <laughs> neither of the ones he's on. But, and then Die Happy, which they just announced and put up for pre sale on the vinyl for that. So um, it's neat to have Larry on there. Um, they are, with as with all of the other limited run, they are colored. This one's kind of a, it's hard to really tell. It's kind of a brownish looks more purple in the picture here and they got the insert that has the lyrics and a neat little picture like I said I was not familiar with the band at all Scott kept telling me dude you're gonna love them um, this is the other one and this one is purple so that's kind of neat same thing lyric sheet insert and this has bunch of pictures there david reese um larry farkas and so i wasn't sure what to expect i did see a video online by him and it looked pretty cool um 
kind of a traditional model, but then I got it and I put it on, especially the first album, which really stood out to me uh, a little more. Maybe I just need to listen to them a little more. Um, it just had a thickness and a heaviness to it. Um, I want to say a lot of it felt kind of alternative, but it was definitely kind of a traditional metal, but it was a little alternative feeling, but not to the point where I didn't like it because I'm not a big fan of alternative stuff. So it was really good though. It was like just an interesting, heavy, bottom heavy, um, just, I don't even want to use the word grungy. Anyway, check them out. They have a video or two out there. And uh, they are really good. And of course, as with all the limited run vinyl, they have very few of them. So you want to act fast and grab them. So those just came in. Now, up next is going to be just uh, typical stuff. Got a little new, a little used. Um, first off is one that came in also, it came in yesterday. And this is another one of those ones that I got on Amazon. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, this happens about every couple weeks where Amazon will list an album that is below my $15 range and it tends to be a bump and scratch, dent, or whatever. Um, they sell it through Amazon Warehouse. There's something about it that they can't sell it new. Could be the shrink rack comes off, could be got bumped or whatever. And I'm not super picky about it. Sometimes they say large cosmetic damage and I'm like, I don't want to take a chance. The cover could be totally shredded. But most of the time they say like new. And I'm like, I'll take a chance. Anyway, so I picked up the Live Purple Tour, White Snake. And there you go. Um, it was under 15. It is a double vinyl set. Typical black. Um, and while I would love, I should have bought the actual purple album back when it first came out. But never did. And now the price is out there. So I'm waiting for that to go down. Um... So this is cool. I just wanted to get this one. Gatefold, pictures and lyrics. Not lyrics, but uh, liner notes. So yeah, so that came in and... Let me show it. So yeah, it's got... This corner is dinged on it. You can see it's kind of crunched there. Um, no. I think that's about it. There was anything major on here. I think it is a little, it's a little bent there. So, you know, not a big deal. I'm not one of those ones that's real finicky about seam splits and things like that. It's more about the music. Um, I don't really buy stuff to, you know, as an investment that it's got to be in pristine condition. I keep my records and handle them very carefully and keep them in somewhat pristine condition. Whatever condition I get them in. But I'm not too picky, so I didn't worry about it too much when I buy stuff like that, especially if the price is right. I'm listening to music and I'm enjoying it. So cool thing about um they just announced a, a week ago and the tickets just went on sale, but White Snake's coming to town. I'm sure if you all been out there watching it they're on tour with Sammy Hagar and Night Ranger. So we got three of my all time favorite bands and I really, really, really expect to go. Anyway, looking forward to that White Snake. I want to see them. I've only seen White Snake once before and that was that was like 10, 12, 12, I don't know, 2014, 2004, 5, somewhere around there. Anyway, and I've never seen Sammy Hagar live, and I've never seen Night Ranger live. Three of my favorite bands, but I've only seen one of them. Now, and these last three are more used stuff, and like I mentioned in my last video, what these are is I went out on Discogs looking for one album, added a couple more in order to save on shipping and this is what I got so this is what I was aiming for Steve Camp's Fire and Ice now I've mentioned Steve Camp a lot lately he is a contemporary Christian um, not gospel but piano driven pop rock at times and he's always just lyrically he's you know he's not like praise music he's you know cutting edge um, and I've always liked his stuff and because I happened to just randomly run into some of his older vinyl over the past year, um, stuff that I've never even owned before in, my, in the past, well, I thought, okay, well, I've got the first album now, and I've got the second album now, and i got the third album now, so which ones do I need? Well, Fire and Ice 
has always been a favorite of mine. I've had this on CD for years. Um, I remember back in the day when we had this, sorry to glare, when we had this um, on CD, it was went out of print really fast and the CD was worth a lot of money. I would never let it go. So anyway, I thought I'm gonna go grab this on vinyl. I got it for just a couple dollars. It's in you know decent condition. Um, and it, I'm like, okay, well, I wanna make sure I get this. And there's a couple more that I want to get, and I think I might have one more on the way. I went grabbing this, and for just a couple extra dollars, I mentioned I grabbed, who did I just mention? Sammy Hagar, um, Street Machine. This is what, there's there's three or four albums in this 70s time frame that, are, that stand out to me as being just core material. This is one of them, Street Machine, Danger Zone. Uh, and my, I think it was in my last video I showed uh, Standing Hampton. To me, that's like a different era. That's when he switched over to a different label. He it started was you know a slightly different uh, approach and sound, but this is the just good rock and roll stuff from the late '70s. And so this Danger Zone and some of those in that era are just ones that uh, that I definitely wanted to have. I mean, I want to have them all, but this is the stuff I really love. So I got this a couple dollars extra with no shipping, and then this American American Metal. Now, Amer I bought this back in the 80s when it came out, and it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, uh, 80s hard rock. I don't really want to call it the 80s metal of the day. I mean, they got the look and everything, but it's not sleazy rock. It's not glam. It's just a solid rock band. Um, this is really pretty much the only real album it's weird, okay, so you look online and, and this is like one of the main albums that they uh, that they released. Now, they do have, there's a box set that was released a couple years ago on Retrospect Records, which I know Retrospect Records tends to be labeled as a bootleg company that doesn't get the rights from the band, and so a lot of people don't, they don't want to, I don't want to say bootleg, but boot, they're not official releases so a lot of people don't want to buy from them and and i've bought some things over the years but they released a americade box set or uh, a bunch of cds and i think there was like five now yeah one or two of them was just a bunch of demo tracks but there were other albums but i don't know if they were actually i don't know i looked online when i when i logged this in and this was like the only record that they seem to have listed. Maybe somebody just hasn't listed the other ones. I don't know. I never saw them over the years. I had this album, thought it was cool. They do wear an American band on here, which was cool back in the day to see a band do that. Um, and I know, uh, so one of the guys in the band is Dave Spitz. And if I, uh, I should have looked it up before. I, I want to say that he is related to the other Spitz brother, but I, I'm not going to say anything. Y'all can correct me in the notes because I forgot, there were, I mean, what the significance was of this band. I just remembered that I liked them. I saw it for a good price. I grabbed it. I mean, it was literally like $5 and there was no extra shipping. Now, my impression was that I was getting the original 1982 release. Lo and behold, and it was still in the shrink wrap. Um, though the shrink wrap was falling off of it a little bit, so I took it off. Turns out this is a 2002, 2002 reissue. It's brand new. It the cover looks kind of cardboardish, like I don't know. It looks a little. I don't know how how much of an official release it was, but musically it sounded fine. It didn't cost me any more than if I'd have bought an 82 one. He just had listed it on Discogs under the wrong category. And so I didn't send it back or anything. And like I say, it's brand new. So I kept it. So that was kind of cool. I just, that, that's a piece. I mean, I bought that back in the 80s as a kid. And it was pretty good. And I, and I did buy that box set when uh, Retrospect released it. So I have all their music. Did I bought it digitally. I didn't buy the CDs. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Now, um, one other time, around the same time as that, I did buy, oh, so I bought the other Striper single. So that's what I went to Discogs for. Found the other Striper single. Ended up going through this guy's list and found just a buttload of stuff for inexpensive prices. So that, I'm hoping, may come in tomorrow. Monday at the latest. Lots of stuff. Um, lots of Christian stuff, too, but lots of stuff. And then, as a guy said, hey, I shipped your package. Oh, P.S., by the way, 
I like your videos on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know who the guy is. He doesn't have a channel, he said, but I, he, he was familiar with me. He saw me. He seen me here. And uh, anyway, so great stuff. He has a lot of great stuff on Discogs, but a lot of the stuff that it, it is a little more pricey than I want to purchase. But if I wanted it, he's got it. And uh, he had the Striper single. I grabbed it. So many things. So I grabbed a lot of the stuff that was like $5 or less. But he had a lot of stuff that was $20 or more. Lots and lots of great metal. Check him out. Eric Loves Vinyl on Discogs. He's got an amazing amount of stuff. Anyway, that's all for now. I will probably be back, who knows, maybe tomorrow. Because if that package comes, I'm going to be eager to show it off. See you later. Thanks a lot. God bless.